Hi, welcome to the latest Democracy for Developer blog. I am Cliff, the programmer and designer of the game, and I'm going to talk about what is coming up in the new version, which should come out by the time you see this video, actually, uh, which will be version 1.39. Um, there's loads of stuff. Lots of stuff has happened. Um, I'm going to talk about the Steam Deck and modding and loads of stuff, but I'm just going to go through some things. Um, I've got a list of, of, of changes here and I'm just going to um, show you them. Um, one of the things is really obvious here from this little icon. Um, we've changed this icon. Someone suggested this on uh, the Steam forums. I've always hated the floppy disk icon because I know that not only is it out of date massively, but floppy disks, like floppy disks were an, an actual floppy technology when I was at university. And that was a sadly a long time ago. So like it's ridiculous, but I just couldn't think of what was the best um, replacement. So we have open folder. It's just an icon change, but like you know, um, it kind of makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? I'm just going to um, start a new game so I can point at things. Um, so uh, one of the things that's changed is this here. This is the focus group screen. Um, and obviously it shows you all of the, the, the different group memberships for an individual voter. You can keep creating like new focus groups of different voters. These are the actual voters in the game. This isn't like uh, like bodged or anything. Um, anyway, if you look at these groups, you can now click on them and it will take you to that group. Um, it didn't used to do that before, which is silly because it was, it was an easy thing to put in and someone suggested it, so it went in. Um, <clears throat> there's a bunch of other stuff. We had some bugs in various graphs, like that graph there, <clears throat> and um, a few others, I think these as well, that they didn't show the current turn, so that value there was not always the current value, it was, it was the value of one turn earlier, anyway it's fixed. Um, there is a new thing that shows up in the next turn report, which is this thing. Um, I won't go to all the trouble of like triggering it, but uh, basically if, you, if you've broken your manifesto promises, it will come up here and let you know. Because you might lose an election thinking you're going to win, and one of the reasons you didn't is people, um, uh, you, you took like a, um, a hit to your trustworthiness because you broke manifesto promises. Um, so that's a new thing that's in. Um, I want to talk about mods, blah blah blah. Um, actually these values some of these values here the way certain things were reported here again had little bugs in it now and then um, they've all been fixed so if ever you looked at these numbers and thought well that doesn't tie up with um, another number that I've seen when I've like um, done an event anyway th this sort of stuff kind of makes should make a lot more sense now um, it's actually capped at 100 percent um, so actually I've picked an example there that disproves exactly what I was saying. That's my, okay, so that's minus 10%, um, and that's minus 10%. Yeah, it used to be that this would be doubled. Um, so that value there should always be this value here. I mean, we should cap that at 100%, I should fix that actually. So that should be 9%, um, yeah. If you look historically over earlier versions of the game or the version that you've got now, if it hasn't updated, um, then um, those numbers could be wrong. And, and the reason for that, it's just the way that we display it. It's, all, it's always been correct in the game, um, but it's whether or not we're going zero to one here or minus one to one. So is it is that plus 100%, minus 100%, or is that plus 50, minus 50? It doesn't matter in the simulation, but the way that we display the numbers should be consistent, and it wasn't, so now they're consistent anyway. It's typical, isn't it? I just expect that. This should not be a thing. Anyway, whatever. Okay, I'm also going to show you something that has changed in the election results um, screen. I've just changed to an Italian debt crisis situation where we have emergency power and everything's a complete catastrophe and we're definitely, definitely going to lose an election. Um, but um, yeah, we're going to lose this election, definitely. Okay, so if I go into this, we have an election. The progressive fascists, who would have thought it, um, seem to be doing well. Um, lots of booing to come. Okay, so the political compass is now here as well. So you can see your journey that I basically moved massively towards socialism. 
um, and then and became hugely unpopular for a variety of reasons, but mostly mostly the, the problem with debt. Um, and don't forget, you can toggle this stuff off if you like that sort of thing. Um, anyway, so this is an extra tab that shows up here now if you have room for it. If you don't have room for it, it won't show it. Um, there's a few other balancing things if you look at like the change list notes that are in there. Um, but now I'm going to talk about the cool stuff, um, which is relating to modding. Okay, we've got some changes to the mod stuff, which is quite exciting. Um, until now, mods were only really supported through Steam. Um, technically, they would work anyway, and that would be great. Um, but in practice, it was a bit difficult because it wasn't obvious how to do that. So I've now turned off Steam and I've launched the game without Steam. So if I go into mods without Steam, get this tab called mods available. And this is basically like Steam Workshop, but not. So it's got a bunch of mods that I um, uh, have got on like the Democracy 4 website, not on Steam. Um, and you can select them and um, there we go, energy policy expansion, whatever, and you can install them and it will basically do pretty much what's, uh, actually this is a really big, <laughs> this is a really big mod that I picked. So it will install it. Now I go to this tab where all of my installed mods are and it's just like anything else. Um, it's as simple as that. So um, I will be like curating this so that um, they're not just like spammy things. Um, but basically we have support now um, for you to use a, a bunch of mods that people have done. Um, I, I'm not vouching for them being amazing or anything, um, but uh, this is the first step towards uh, kind of mirroring what Steam provides in terms of mod support, but outside of Steam. I'm also going to show you some changes to the Steamworks support. Basically, we're trying to make mod creation really easy. So this is with Steam installed. So if I go here and I get to create new mod. This is kind of like as it was before, although we've slightly changed some of the wording and the layout of this. Um, this is a mod that I've already submitted to Steam Workshop and we've got a new thing where you can edit bits of it. So if you go to add mod content uh, and you wanted to create a new dilemma um, for your mod, then you can do it all in the game without touching any files at all. So I copied a bunch of um, uh, dilemmas from the base game in this just, just to play with it so you can edit all this stuff you can edit all the different options um, and if you want to change one of these kind of things at the moment random you can't edit but I'm, I'm working on it right um, so if you wanted to change that um, that's the effect th th that's the kind of um, impact that GDP has on this dilemma showing up um, and the cool thing is you can edit stuff like this um, and kind of see all of like how it's how it's going to impact it and with this here um, it will actually suggest stuff so um, you know we could make that we could make that the effect of income tax has this kind of effect on triggering um, you know this particular dilemma whatever hopefully that will save yeah it will um, and it's the same with it with effects at the moment it's not massively um, intuitive to use and you need to have kind of read the documentation anyway, but it's a lot easier when you know what you're doing. It's a lot easier to create a dilemma with this process than it is messing around with scripts and files. And I want to add this for policies, sim values, they're the blue things, um, and situations and eventually countries and other stuff. So I'm working on this and it will take some time and it will probably extend after we um, leave early access. Um, which won't be much longer until we're going to do that. Um, but basically mod support is about to get a lot better. So there will be a lot more mods both through Steam and outside of Steam. And I think that's really cool. Um, so um, this is one of the big things that is coming to the game. Much, be much, much better mod support, um, which I think people really want because some people want to add loads and loads of, of complexity to the game. And I'd like to support that through mods. Um, the other thing that I would like to mention, and hopefully here eventually I will be able to record some nice video of it. Um, so insert video here. Um, I have a Steam Deck, which is the new console from, from Valve. Um, de some developers have been given like early versions of it. Um, and it runs democracy. And it runs democracy actually um, quite nicely. Frame rate wise, it's perfect. And um, you know the sound is great and all the rest of it. Obviously, the game wasn't designed to be played on a really small screen, and it wasn't. It's not the kind of game that you would design automatically to run on something like the Steam Deck. Um, but you you can play it, and if you've got um, 
like better eyesight and uh, more of an affinity to like small screen stuff um, then you'll probably find it um, fairly reasonable to play on the Steam Deck. I am I am not a console gamer and I am a huge monitor person. This is I I game on a like a sort of four foot something monitor, <laughs> so like I'm not a Steam Deck guy, um, so I can't really judge. But it seems to run perfectly is what I'm getting at. Um, obviously there's, there's some time until that comes out, but I thought it was worth mentioning that and um, showing you some images or whatever of it. For some reason to do with my webcam, which is a good webcam, um, and the technology they use in the screen for the Steam Deck, it's really hard to film it looking crisp, but it looks fantastic. It looks really crisp, um, and that will not come across until you've got one in your hands and you play it um, because it's it's really hard I don't know like it's something to do with like automatically focusing or everything looks blurry but um, but it's not it's it's super crisp it's brilliant um, anyway I thought I'd mention that so um, yeah we'll be coming out of we'll be adding Japanese to the game soon um, and a lot more mod support and coming out of early access soon if you're not japanese and you hate mods then not a lot is going to change between now and it's coming out of early access we will still continue to do updates after the game um, is released obviously um, for quite a while um, especially with mod support i'm really into mod support um, i want to get that editor working really well it's a bit of a mess at the moment <laughs> but it'll be great in the end anyway um so quite a lot has happened um, making this video has been a disaster, uh, not just because of technical problems, but because I was attacked by about 100 wasps earlier. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you to everyone who's bought the game uh, while it's in early access, by the way. We'll do a big like video when it comes out of that. Um, it is, in fact, in early access for a year as of tomorrow, which is probably the day I'm uploading this. So, um, you know, a year in early access sounds about right to me. Um, Anyway, uh, we've probably got another month, uh, maybe a little bit more. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe because we will do other videos about um, stuff uh, going on. And speak to you soon.